Ah, so we're rolling. Gina Poo! <laughs> Affectionately known as. as. Yes, for many years now. I remember when you had to change your email from Gina Poo at Yahoo. I felt like it was a, it was a right transition. <laughs> I had graduated from Gina Poo. And that's only for the special ones uh, these that days. That was funny. Sending out your CV, you're like... Maybe Gina Poo isn't going to cut it <laughs> <Yes. laughs> from looking for a job. But you know, that's one of those things when you're growing up, you don't think about at right, all. Right. I'm just like, hey, that's my nickname. I love it. It's yeah. me. But no, it's not going to cut it. So how did you, okay, do you even know when you got that nickname or was it just so far My mom. Back? Oh, really? Yeah. Your mom? My how? mom was the only person that called me Gina Poo. Ah, okay. And then, you know, once my friends heard it, then it just kind of stuck from there. Had a life of its own. Right, right. Yeah. We had a few other nicknames. I liked it. I actually don't like when people call me Gina. I'm like, it feels too serious. That's true, actually. Who are you talking to? Do I ever call you Gina? You don't. Yeah, it feels you odd. You call me GP? No, you don't. Yeah, I, I, it was GP for a while and I switched it up to PG. Yes, <laughs> it, yes. You are the only person that calls me PG. PG. That is, yes, that is it. <laughs> Uh, it only makes yeah. sense after calling you GP for all those years, I think. Then, like, switching it to PG, you're like, yeah. okay, I get it. I, I like it. it. Yeah. Because I know it's you. So what's up? How are you? I'm good. I'm just, you know, a little break from being mommy mm. to come and do podcasts and go. catch up with my friend. There you go. Got I'll you out take, of the house, Oa. Uh, hello. <laughs> I was actually watching the Olympics, which was... Um, I wanted to see some of the races, right? Which is popping right now. Yeah, how was that going? It's good. Yeah. And I saw um, our swimmer yesterday. yesterday. Yeah, you were watching it. Wow, he is so impressive. Definitely. Oh my goodness, I was completely blown away, and it's so crazy. Like even though he came last, mm-hmm. it's just by. It's by I know. Fractions of a second. second. It's like, I mean, that must be heartbreaking for him. But just to be in that category with, you know, that caliber of talent must be such an awesome experience for him. For sure, man. It made my heart swell. Felt really good for him. Yeah, it was good to see Cayman rally around it, you know, and get all excited about it. And like even the people here in the office were wearing like their fl- the flag for the shirt. And, yeah, you know, like and everyone... Swanky Kitchen Band was wearing it. I there. know, I know. Yeah. So what were you watching today? It was um, hundred meter. Oh. Yeah, oh. woman. But I only got a sneak peek because mm. I had to. I was running some errands with the little one. So. Right, right. Yeah. So it's not the finals yet on the hundred. No, right? yeah. not yet. Yeah. It's just, just the heats. All right. Huh. I don't yeah. even know who, like, the fastest people in the world is, you know? Like, you saying Bolt, like, I could say his name, but I don't, know, I don't know who's out there nowadays. Yeah, I mean, people are coming for him, but no one, I mean, no one's broken his record. Yeah. He is still the man. For sure. Yeah. For sure. He is the man. So I'm I'm curious to see if anyone can step step to the plate yeah. and see what they can do. I haven't been watching that much. Um I think I burnt out on the Euro Cup because that was earlier this year, the football. Um, so I haven't watched that much Olympics. Yeah. The internet always taking prisoners, man. <sighs> that's true, huh? Ugh. I feel like that's uh, honestly kind of what it does. I know. That's yeah. why I'm terrified to do stuff like this. <laughs> like, oh. You know, I wanted to ask you from a while ago to be in the podcast, but I know you would be hesitant. And I don't know why I asked you today, but... Maybe you asked me in the right way, because if I had time to think about it and overanalyze and, you know, mentally prepare, which would mean (laughs) just freaking myself out, I probably wouldn't have come. But I'm kind of... I've I've turned over a new leaf in my life. I want to actually do things that scare me Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and not live trying to shelter myself from everything that can go wrong all the time this is a big deal for me in my life because i'm just over being worried about things Mm. i just want to live more true yeah true i'm fighting it i was reading something the other day where there's like there's two underlying emotions in every action and everything that you do throughout the day it's either fair and you close up or love and you open up you know (laughs) Absolutely. And I i mean, I've struggled with anxiety my whole life. Mm-hmm. Like that's, you know, I was involved in some really serious 
very close call accidents, you know, like a plane almost crashing and being in a hot air balloon accident and like just really scary situations right. that I never would have expected. Right. So it just kind of built up that anxiety to not do anything that'll put myself in danger. Sure, sure. Um, and that just manifested into many different ways sure. throughout my life. But anyways, I'm getting to a stage now where I'm just over feeling that fear all the time. Right, right. Yeah, I'd rather receive the love. Yeah, me too. Me too. But I think you were always pretty good at that. You, I think for a few years you have been like doing things, even up to 10 years ago, I remember you coming to try out for some of my films and it was like kind of the same thing. You're like, I just want to put myself out there and do something I haven't done before. And so I feel that's always been part of your MO. It, I guess, I mean, I guess now that you're saying it, you might be right, but it still requires a lot of mm. energy for me. It doesn't mm. come naturally. Right. Like I have to mentally tell myself that, you know, I should just try. I should put myself out there. Right. I should be go beyond my limits, you know, right. and not just stay so closed off right. from everything. That makes sense. I guess it like requires attention to like always be on top of that because you can easily close out, you know. Yeah, and I think... For me, it's always like I don't ever want to step up to the plate unless I'm prepared, unless I, you know, feel like I can contribute or that I'll actually be good. I hate that feeling of putting myself out there and then I completely fail. Mm. You know, like that that feeling is something that I don't like. Mm -hmm. So I think trying to protect yourself from that is normal. Right. Um but yeah, I'm just trying to get over that. Yeah. It's like as you get older, you start to learn that the mistakes is where the real lessons are learned. Amen life. to that. True that, huh? Not not being perfect at everything and only listening to yourself. You kind of need to just let go, make the mistakes, take other people's input into consideration, mm. you know, and evolve that way. Mm. Yeah. That's very interesting that, you know, it's it, you learn so much from mistakes like that, you know, um, because they hurt and you mm -hmm. don't want to go through them and they're just so painful. Mm -hmm. All right. And but yet, the, but then when years go by, you're, you're grateful and you're thankful for that moment because you learned something that you didn't learn before. Right. Um, That's where all the learning happens. Yeah. I mean, it, it. I can look back at so many different stages of my life where. I'm like, oh, wow, I don't know if I would have learned that lesson had I not gone, gone through that really horrible situation, <laughs> you know? Like, how would I have learned that lesson? But it's definitely, it's changed my perspective on struggle mm -hmm. that I, once I see the struggle coming, I'm not like building up this armor and feeling like I'm going to war with it. I'm mm -hmm. just kind of like, working through the feelings, letting it happen, feeling whatever you need to feel about mm. it, and just trusting that, you know, in time, you're going to be on the other side of this, and you're going to look back with some really good, good nuggets. Mm. I like how you said, like, feeling the feelings. Yeah, like, man. That's something that I've tried to do over the last couple of years, because you know me, I'm very cerebral, and maybe not in touch with my mm -hmm. emotions. And that came to the forefront at some point in my life. And I'm like, you know what? I actually need to get, it's not that cool to not be in touch with your emotions. Like you, you need to like get in there and you need to. And the thing about getting in touch with emotions is that you can't think about it. You can't think with your emotions. You actually have to feel and mm -hmm. you can't put, you can't like describe that with your mind, the feeling, right? It's like almost indescribable to like feel emotion as opposed to like thinking about feeling about your emotion, you know? Um, yeah. It, it's a skill. Yeah, it, it really is a skill. And I think that, you know, especially for men, you don't grow up with anyone telling you that you need to feel your feelings. They tell <laughs> you to like suck it up and keep it moving. And right. are you really crying? And, you know, they call you a couple words that right. we're not going to say on this podcast. <laughs> But that's how it was. Yeah. Even even for, I mean, it's tougher for guys, but even for girls, right. I would say it's the same thing. It's right. like, come on, you you think this is rough? Like, this is nothing compared to what life has in store for you. I've heard this comment a million times, right, right. but I don't know if that necessarily is helpful when it comes to actually just processing feelings. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like you actually have to feel them mm -hmm. and whatever that is for you, whatever, mm -hmm. if it's tears, if it's, you know, solitude, if it's, you know, reading or emerge, you know, Im immersing yourself in something that um, helps you process 
you know, writing, journaling, therapy, whatever. I've grown to understand that it's required for right. every human being. Uh, like you can't just shut that stuff off. I agree. I do agree with that. Um, I feel like, you know, like even therapy, like I feel like people, there's still so, sort of somewhat a semi-negative connotation to therapy. Oh, you go to therapy, like something. But I feel like you're saying, I feel like uh, that should actually be required for everyone. Everybody. 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 Needs to go through that. I, I'm like sick of saying it now. I'm like... You need therapy. <laughs> and that's not an insult. That's not an insult. I'm not I'm not really trying to put you down. Right. Like this is me giving you positive feedback right. as a friend. Right. I think the best option for you right now is to go and sit on a couch with somebody and just talk it out. Right. right. Because what a therapy and I I mean I went to therapy late in life, <laughs> very very late in life. But once I went, I couldn't believe I waited that long mm-hmm. first of all to go do it. Right. And once I did it, I was like, okay, so you're not solving my problems. Because I hear a lot of people saying like, oh, what therapy going to do for me? They can't solve my problems or whatever. It's really about them giving you the tools Mm -hmm. to help you. It's how to train your brain, Mm -hmm. really. I like that. Yeah. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. That's what therapy is. Mm -hmm. They're telling you, giving you the tools to use to help your brain cope in a variety of different ways scenarios or life's challenges right, right game changer for me yeah complete game changer yeah man uh, me too i think anyone that's done therapy agrees that it's beneficial i you know it's something i find with it and even with these podcasts it, like when you're talking to somebody and then you have that other person for some reason they can see something that you can't see right Yes. And it's well, like right in front of your face, like, I should know this, but it's like, it's only when I heard you say it, then I, oh, yeah, obviously that makes so much sense. That yes. happens to me a lot. I don't know why. Yes. And they're not emotionally invested too. I feel like when right. you've been in a scenario or a situation for a long time, you tend to have a very, um, you mm. know, you have blinders on mm-hmm. to the truth. Mm. You're like, you're like, well, I know that that's the truth. I'm just looking towards that truth right. and you can't tell me anything. All right. That's true. But, you know, someone just helping you move the blinders a little bit and just seeing other people's perspectives sure. on things sure. is super helpful because the world is not just about how you feel. Yeah. It's about how everyone feels and how you affect people. Yeah. Yeah. How you affect people. That was something I learned, too. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, what did, and what did you learn about that? Well, you know, that you affect people. And sometimes you don't realize that you're affecting people. And, of course, that can mean positively, but it could also mean negatively. Um, it's it's worse if it's negatively because you're negatively affecting mm-hmm. people and you're not realizing it. Mm-hmm. Right. So, obviously, that's a that's a hole. That's a, that's a, 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 a black spot that you need to figure mm-hmm. out in your life if you want to have, you know, a better life, better relationships. You know, um, real maturity is Mm self-awareness straight up. Mm -hmm. It's like if you don't have self-awareness, there's no way that you can call yourself a mature person. You have to know how you how you present yourself into this world Mm -hmm. and, you know, what kind of impact you want to have on people. How do you want to make people feel, Mm -hmm. you know, like you might be the smartest person in the room, but no one cares if they don't like your personality. If you make people feel bad, you know. Right. So it really, it really does matter. Huh. Very, very true. It's interesting that the one, th- it's like the thing that you'll know least about is yourself, which should be the thing that you feel like you know most about, you know? Huh. It's like the stripping away of all these things to get to the core of the ego, which is, you know, that's like a lifelong journey, you know? Oh my gosh. I read a book about the ego that just blew my mind yeah. and it completely changed the way I think about myself and how I interact with people and just tell me it's called the power of now. Oh, wow. Yes. Have Maya, you read it? Maya is reading it right now. Uh, I have read it. I read it when back when I broke my leg the same year. Oh my gosh. I'm going to read it again. Mm. I'm mm. going to, is it, is it the power of now? Yes, it is. Uh, Eckhart Tolle is, yes. the, is the author. Yeah. It really, really, really impacted my life. Hmm. For the better, just just even somebody breaking down the concept of ego mm-hmm. and how that filters into everyday interactions and how you see yourself in this world, mm-hmm. how you relate to people, mm-hmm. I thought was really profound. Like, I don't even know how he 
could articulate everything he did in that book so well. Yeah. Um, There's YouTube videos of him too where you can like watch him. You have to speed it up a little bit, I feel. I do that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he is a little slower. You're right. He's very thoughtful. I, he I love it though. I'm not yes. even going to say a negative thing about it because yes. I love how he speaks and it me feels too. like it, it almost makes me feel like I'm in a meditative kind of state, mm -hmm. you know, like just his voice is True. so calming. Right. But you know us, we're always in a rush. So yeah. we're like, okay, okay, okay let's <laughs> speed this up a little yeah. bit. So sometimes I speed him up, but when I listen to the book, I listen to it exactly how he says it and how he, you know. Articulates it. Yeah, and, and just emphasizes certain things. I like, I like that. When I was listening to him the other day, I was like, wait, he's German? I think he's German, I right? I think he is. Because it, his, his voice caught me off guard. I'm like, that's not what I imagined. I guess, I don't know, yeah, German born. Um, but lived in the UK? Um, I could be way off. I'm not sure. Let's see. German born. Early life. Germany. He moved to Spain in 1961 with his dad, where he refused all forms of formal education between the ages of 13 and 22. What? Preferring instead to pursue his own creative and philosophical interests. I love this guy. Yeah, man. I love that, this guy. Uh, that's awesome. He, I didn't even know that. I, now know I, that I love him even more. <laughs> Yeah. Because like you would never have guessed that this is a man that is not fully educated on every single Isn't that level. Right? Isn't that so true? He is so profound, everything that he has to say, man. I'm like, I, I just want to read all of his books. Huh. Every single every podcast, every YouTube video, I've seen quite a few. Um, but uh yeah. definitely recommend And it's in the title anything he has to say. The power of now. Like Maya was saying the other day, pretend you have no past and you're and you just like woke up in the moment and you're in the present. And I was doing that like a couple. Oh, that's so refreshing. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. No past. Yeah. You know how much weight is lifted off of you right. if you just let go of your past. Yeah. How 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 much more like there's so much more space mm. in your mind mm. now that you're just thinking about what's next and mm -hmm. the future instead of being bogged down by what happened to you when you were seven or mm. eight or 10 or 12. Mm. I mean, we all have trauma, mm. some, you know, worse than others. Um, and, you know, it is a real, it's a real part of life that some people have issues getting over. So I don't want to minimize that right. feeling. Right. But I feel like we are truly free once we recognize that you have to let go of your past. Yeah. I you have to let it go. Yeah, I mean, you just, it's so freeing. Mm. It's so freeing. I was in here the other day, too, and, I, and like it, it, I have like a little 15-minute meditation in the afternoons. And then I, I, when I was meditating, it came to me, I was like, oh, yeah, pretend you have no past. And then I was just all, I was like a kid. I was like, it was in this room. I was like, there's cameras. I'm like, this is stuff I get to play with. And it, I just became a little more childlike, it felt, mm -hmm. when I cut off the past. And, mm -hmm. uh, or just a little more appreciative of, I feel great feel mm -hmm. healthy i'm not stressed about anything mm -hmm. right now like i'm chilling and it's got cameras like i was saying and good like, for you it was cool it was cool it was really i cool. like this for yeah. you because that is a that is a whole other type of existence when you can just not be so stressed out about yeah. every single detail and you can just be in that childlike state mm. a lot of people don't have the energy for that and they don't they like overlook that but it's to me that's where freedom is yeah i think i think the world is moving towards that a little bit that sort of understanding mm -hmm. therapeutic you know ego the power of now living in the moment you know letting go of these things yeah i mean having a i mean my daughter is three definitely having a child has you know it's awoken that feeling in me of being playful and you know actually liking it right. you know like not feeling like it's a task to have to do something with my child or right. having to play or um but actually like engaging in a playful way and it's actually like some of the happiest moments of my day right when i can just not think about you know the stressors and just focus on the little things because right. to kids like everything make them happy right it's like 
She's in full tears. I right? because I just I I want the white chocolate. I don't want the <laughs> dark chocolate. I'm like, wow, that was all I had to worry about today. <laughs> but it makes uh, me smile. I love it so much. That's cute. Yeah, it definitely awakens something in me. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So you're listening to the book on your on the um the audiobook. I can only do audible. Yeah, you were telling me the other day we met. You just. <laughs> Going through some books like nothing right now? I, well, yeah, I've done 25 books wow. in a year and a whoa, half. Whoa, yeah, whoa, Audible whoa. has changed my life. Wow. I sat with a friend the other day and they were like, I don't even know who you are. It's you're so like a, You're like a different person, like right. me quoting books. Right. Who am I? Right. But I needed, I had an awakening in my life where I felt like, the path that I was on wasn't, it, I didn't feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I needed to make time for, um, you know, growing mentally and just learning new things. And really just, it started off with me just wanting to learn how to deal with stress because I felt like the stress in my life was never ending. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like I just never had a handle on it. Mm -hmm. Like every time it came, I was like in panic mode. Right. And I don't want to be like that because it's one thing that's constant in life is that you're always going to have stress. Right. Like it's going to come. Right. Those situations that make you want to be stressed right. out. So you need to be able to um, manage it. Yeah, so I started off with one book, and it's um, it was called. Uh, it's gonna come back to me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. soon, um, but once I started off with that book, mm -hmm. oh, the Untethered Soul, mm. amazing. Mm. So I started off with that book because someone said to me, "You should do, you should use Audible," because I was, you know, expressing that I have struggles reading right. and i've had issues reading my whole life yes i remember yes. yes and and it affected my life greatly mm -hmm. um because i never wanted to keep going in school i didn't want to have to study i didn't want to have to keep reading and reading and reading right. like i just it's something about my brain like i get i just get sleepy yeah. I, I i struggle to really read. focus on reading a yeah. book yeah. i literally want to just fall asleep every time i open a book <laughs> so i was like look at this i am now consuming more books than i've ever consumed in my whole life i've you know accepted and just i'm i'm aware that okay i can't actually physically read a book and i can it'll just take me a lot longer sure. to read one book mm -hmm. but now that i'm using audible i'm like wow I've just accepted that this is the preferred route for me to consume right. information. Right. I like that I know myself now. I don't feel any shame. Right. I've right. felt shamed before right. that I don't read books because right. right. people that are readers, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like they can be a little judgmental sure. of people that don't read. Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And even now that I consume a lot of books on Audible, if I say I read a book, they still correct me and say I didn't read the book. Really? I listen they make to that the distinction. Yes, they do. Interesting. Yes, they do. Interesting. Yes, they do. Huh. And hey, for me, it's the same because I'm receiving sure. the information. Sure. I feel but like it's even to readers, it's still not reading. <laughs> Anywho, I digress. That's so interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. a big deal. There's something to ponder there. I like that. Yeah, man. <laughs> they they take it very seriously. Uh, um, but yeah, I'm I love that I'm not embarrassed anymore. Yeah. I've just accepted that that's just not my thing. Yeah. And there, you know, you can be great at certain things and then you can be terrible at certain things. And that's usually how it is. With people, you know, yeah. no one's good at everything. Like people are good at some things and just not good at others. Like everybody's different. But I feel like only now we're in that that place mm. where we are we're talking about these mm -hmm. differences and we can like that way saying yeah it's yeah. It, this is a new thing. Yeah. I felt like we were definitely categorized and you know chastised yes. if you weren't a reader like why yes. not because then you're you're not as good or something you know there's yeah. something wrong yes i definitely felt like you weren't as smart right. if you didn't do these things right. if you weren't great at math which is also my achilles tendon <laughs> um huh. but i got through you know i feel like i'm pretty and now you're reading more than anybody. at what i do and i can i have a calculator for that yeah i have audible so i'm good 
<laughs> nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I do both. I'll do the reading, and but I mean the the, the listening is just, and then you could speed it up. Yes. I mean you can't beat that. You cannot read when you're driving, but you can you can read with your ears when you're driving. One thousand, and that is my favorite location to listen to a book. Right. When I'm driving, yeah, right, and right. that's literally how I've listened to all of these books right. over the last year and a half. Right. Like every time I get in the car, like I, I save the music for the gym. Right. So music is now designated for the gym, like that, or you know, a long walk or something. Right. And then every car trip now, if you know, if Leela's not in the car, being right. the boss and wanting me to play Inspector Gadget <laughs> or Barbie Girl over and over and over, like the songs. Yes, she has yeah. her own playlist. Oh, really? Yes, yeah. she does. Yeah, I believe Inspector Gadget song. Hello. That's a good song. Yes. I used it on the first TikTok I ever created. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> uh, you know, Inspector Gadget. Yeah, man. She loves it. She loves it. And we, we, you know, we introduce her to different types of music and kind of like our childhood, the themes sure. from our childhood. Sure. That, and DuckTales. Okay. Like she wouldn't, have any clue about, about DuckTales right? if we didn't introduce her right. to the theme song. Okay, okay. You know, because both Seb and I are really into music. Right. And, huh. yeah, so what about to... The Little Mermaid? She's not, no, not she hasn't there. tapped into that okay, yet. Okay. I need to introduce it to her. Because I feel like that's just still there. Like my nieces and nephews, they're, they're older than Leela, but yeah. they're still like young. And I'm like, well, Anna's still listening to The Little Mermaid? And like, I listen to the songs. I'm like, yo, those songs are still good. Okay, I need to get on to that. Yes. Because for, I have to be honest, for a long time, we were stuck on teaching her um, Frank Sinatra songs. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool, so cool. she... That's we, smart. Yeah, she she knows a lot yeah. of Frank Sinatra songs. I mean, before she was even three, she knew <laughs> the words. Like she could sing them. That's awesome. If you start the song and stop it, she could tell you which song it was. Wow. Like, yeah, she's she's That's in tune. Yeah, man, she's in tune. Huh. So now we've moved on to other fun sure, stuff. Sure. Like, can't make our three year old so serious. <laughs> <laughs> Frank Sinatra. That's cool though. Just shows but we love Frank. What you can um inculcate in the mind of your child i love that uh, you get one shot at that i'm mm -hmm. like that i take it so seriously mm -hmm. i'm like i literally every day i wake up and i think what do i want what seed do i want to plant in my child mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. what 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 do i want her to learn what do i think is important for her to know like and i i i think about it i mm -hmm. actually put effort into it and the same thing you know as my husband like mm -hmm. he we're very um not strategic, but, you know, there are things I want her to love, you know, mm -hmm. that we love. You know, mm -hmm. we love music, so that's one of them, mm -hmm. one of the things. I love that. Mm. Yeah, must love music, and you must love the beach, and you must love sports. Like, I, I'm sorry, girl. Huh. We're going to, I don't know which sport you're going to like yet. Well, you're going to like one of but them. But you're going to like one of them. Maybe two. Maybe two. And I'm going to push you <laughs> to do it. And I mean, is Whether there an like instrument you like? Pick one. <laughs> right. Because you're going to learn one. Right. And these are the things I wish that I stuck with in my childhood. Yeah. That I want to, you know, guide her on. Yeah. It's interesting. Like you said, you only, like you said, you have one shot at it. You know, you're only young once, and, and especially in that period where you could learn things easier than mm -hmm. when you're older, you know? Well, I mean, I see, I've had a lot of um, great examples in my life where I've seen parenting styles. Like, you know, when I was a child, like seeing my parents' parenting style versus parenting styles of some of my friends' is parents, mm -hmm. um, you know, and a lot of them, they weren't able to, you know, come out and play at certain times. Mm -hmm. And they had to, you know, stay in and do practice for whatever instrument, mm -hmm. or maybe it's one, two or three instruments. Mm -hmm. um, they also had, you know, their practices for whatever sport they were doing. So they had limited social time. Right. And more time had to be focused on getting work done, schoolwork, chores, instruments, all that stuff. Mm. And now they're like successful musicians, variety of talents, mm -hmm. variety of action. I, I, I mean, I could I could say this about a few of my friends that mm -hmm. I'm extremely proud of. Um, you know, just but it's all due to their 
parents right, really right, pushing them right. and ensuring that they're focused right yeah so i don't know if i'll be that strict but i i do believe in planting the seeds and you know encouraging them to stay on the course yeah huh for sure i love that a lot yeah so what are the books you got in your mm. what, what is it audible audible i you know i've i was gonna say read I've listened to quite a few. You know, I have to say I really liked Will Smith's book and I finished reading Will Smith's book right I'm not kidding, two days before the slap. Really? Two days before the slap. Right, right. That's perfect though, I guess. Well, for me, I felt like I had a different perspective on the slap because I read the book. Interesting, really. Yes. How so? Why? Well, because he taps into, um, you know, his, not like his alter ego, but he, he definitely goes into detail about, you know, how funny Will is not the real Will and mm. that, you know, he has a lot of baggage and right. scars from his childhood. His dad was very abusive. Is that right? Yes. He had a very, very troubling um, childhood. Mm. Uh, that he, you know, he built up that resentment and also like that that shield, you know, like how to protect himself in sure. those types of scenarios. Sure. Um, hmm. And it it what it really informed me of was that he does have a lot that he's holding mm. in. Mm-hmm. Like he's holding in a lot, and he puts on the funny persona to kind of mask that. Mm. Hmm. Um, and I feel a lot of comedians have that same kind of dark side yeah yeah yeah. like there's a deep sadness there that they're covering up with the humor right right um i genuinely felt a sadness for him and i and i I felt like i got to know him a little bit better from reading the book so when the slap happened um i just felt wow this is someone who's really really hurt he he's been holding in something that just exploded um in the worst possible way yeah yeah Uh that's 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 what happens when you're holding in Mm -hmm. and you don't process all those feelings properly they come out in moments like that which in his case was in front of the whole world world um i just i feel for him obviously like terrible what happened to you know chris rock but Mm -hmm. I, i i did have a level of empathy for his mental state right. based on what i had read in the book right that makes sense yeah you know because i guess for a lot of people who didn't know that they were probably just shocked and surprised because it was out of character right right right, right. i love that yeah yeah exactly. but exactly. but after reading the book i realized that it is in his character right it's just been bubbling up right. inside there huh what's that yeah. book called um will oh huh. huh. Will. Nice. Really, really good book. I enjoyed that. Um, but there are many our there are many others. Let me I have, I have my whole list. Yeah, right man, bring here. them up. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna I remember tell you. you told me you started um you started reading the gay science by Friedrich Nietzsche. <laughs> then you had to put a pause on that one. I could not compute that <laughs> book. Yeah. I am sorry. You'll, you'll I'm, I, I'm not there yet. You'll maybe maybe that's one of those books that I actually have to read the words and read every line over 10 <laughs> times. <laughs> that's part of reading, to just reread. Yes. Like, because read that sentence, that paragraph, this page. Like, what? Listening to it, I felt like I was losing my mind. I'm like, uh. <laughs> I'm like, pause. First of all, he used like 15 big words in one sentence. Yeah. And you know, us big words. It's such a, uh. <laughs> it's a K-Manion thing to say. Like, all these big words. Uh. Um, there were a lot of big words yeah, yeah. that I didn't know the meaning of sure. in one sentence. Sure, that's how he is. I told you he said, he, he was very cocky. He said, he says more in one paragraph than philosophers say in a book. Yeah, he had like a quote like that. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah. So I think I'm going to tackle that book, but I need to have a dictionary next to me and I also need a notepad. So I'm like writing and analyzing and kind of like trying to decode it a little yeah. bit. I couldn't listen to it. Right, right. Um, but I, I kind of went in and out between, you know, self-help, you know, 
conquering stress, you know, dealing with your mental state and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I want to say this is another celebrity book, but I went in and out between those types of books and then autobiographies. I love hearing about people's journeys, which I find is... It's very humbling because I feel like we feel like we're the only ones going through all these mm. stresses and pressures and failures and all these things. And the more I read autobiographies and tap into other people's stories, you realize that like everybody is going through the same stuff, some worse than others. Yeah. But we all kind of have the same challenges. Mm -hmm. um, it might not look exactly the same, but there are a lot of people out there that have overcome some really terrible things in their lives. Right. And Mariah Carey was one of those. Okay, that's another book? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'd love to read that one. I, I, I think... Anyone could read that book and take away something from it, even if you're not really uh, a Mariah Carey fan, right. music fan. Sure. Um, but her her story of survival and what she's been through with her family and the level of disappointment she's felt in her life from mm. just by the hands of people, you know, um, has it's very just very inspiring mm. she's overcome some really really mm. tough situations in her life and her success is really like she she put herself there she worked hard very very hard to mm. get where she's at nobody mm. she didn't get handed that like right. she was writing songs as a teenager right. some of my favorite mariah carey songs i learned in that book she wrote in high school interesting high school and you didn't know that huh? no like, wow. yeah. no i'm like and these are like complex love songs right like now after i read the book i went back and i listened to a lot of these songs and i was like you really read this you you wrote this when you were 16 right this is talking about like deep love and disappointment and like i mean she was clearly making it up mm -hmm. because you know she talks in the book about her being a prude you know she wasn't she was just a prude okay she didn't want to make the mistakes that her sister made and i don't want to give away too much but the situation with her and her sister is just wow that's a thing very complex huh. very complex huh i'm interested in that one well what that one called it's the meaning of mariah carey nice very 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 good book um but there's tons i have tons oh <gasps> long walk to freedom don't know that one Lo what that is what that is? Yeah, what oh that is? my goodness! Come on, this is about Nelson Mandela. Ah, okay. This is his book. Right. This is talking about his long walk, walk to, to freedom. freedom, and I feel like every single human being should read that book mm. and mm. ask yourself, what have you done lately? Right. <laughs> <laughs> have you done anything lately? <laughs> I mean, Nelson Mandela made me feel like I wasn't trying. <laughs> I haven't done anything in my life. Right. This man, he is the epitome of inspirational. Hmm. E epitome. Hmm. The way he fought for what was achieved in South Africa right. is just... I don't even have the right words for it. And to actually hear it, you know, from his own words... Um, very shocking, very... Um, shocking. Yeah, I mean, you know, we were over here in a bubble. Mm -hmm. We didn't really know what was going on right. in Africa. Right. I mean, we got bits and pieces of information about slavery. Mm -hmm. I feel like they fed us what they wanted us to know mm -hmm. about slavery here, mm -hmm. but we didn't really get like a very big picture of what was really going on mm -hmm. with colonialism. Like, mm -hmm. but... What was happening there is really mm. gut wrenching. Right. Yeah, mm. it, it was. Um, yeah, I think it's worth reading the book. Yeah. He goes into a lot of detail, play by play, really of right. of um of how that whole period of history transpired. Mm. You know how they got over the apartheid and. Mm. Yeah. Sounds like it would be like an epic. You know, his whole life is like. And well, it, this isn't about his... No, not his whole life, just a certain period? It's... 
Oh, I can't even remember. I think it it kind of touches on his childhood, but it really is about that period where, you know, the apartheid existed. Right. And, okay. And um, it was one of the first books I... It was 27 hours long. Wow. All of the other books are like, you know, max maybe 14, but his that book was 27 right. hours long. Wow. Yeah. Huh. So it's it's quite a read. You have to be invested in it. Sure. But, but yeah, it's it's definitely one of those that um I thought was very profound and everyone even I think I think a lot of races, you know, cuz if it's not happening to their race, they might not be educated on it or feel like they need to be aware, but I feel like all races should understand the plight of all races. Mm. That that's how we become more human and have more humanity mm. and just just understanding. I think I felt very frustrated at various periods in my life where I feel like people just turn a blind eye to what other races experience, you know, and I'm not just talking about the black race, mm -hmm. you know, or, you know, it, it could be any nationality or race mm -hmm. that have gone through their own trying times. Mm -hmm. But I think we all should mm -hmm. tap in and be aware and be empathetic mm -hmm. of the experience because it is different. It is different right. for different races mm -hmm. and you have to understand it and you have to be respectful and empathetic. Mm -hmm. I do believe that. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a story. Everyone has their, yeah, it's, it's, it, the world is so complex, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. but, yeah, that, that could be another topic in itself. Yeah. Huh. But yeah, I, I think definitely more empathy for every, mm -hmm. every race is yeah. needed. I see you have the alchemist in there too. I love that book. Yeah. I read I, it a long I love time that. ago. I feel like you told me about that book. Hmm. Like when we were kids. But yeah. I only read The Alchemist because Will Smith talked about it in his Is book. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> yes. That's cool. He mentions that book quite often oh, cool. as one of the pillars of his life. Right. Cool. Um and I, and and he's not the only one. I mean, I'm sure I've heard you say it, Yanni. Maybe like a sure. few of my friends sure. have read it that are readers. Sure. Um, because I guess it was just one of those books that everyone read when yeah. they were younger. I guess it was just a classic. I don't remember how. Except I... me. <laughs> yeah. You weren't reading at that point. You yeah, were, I was. I, hey, I'm artistic, and like now that I get that, you know, I just wasn't in tuned into that. I like art, and I like being creative. But I love how it's come around now and that you're totally like reading all these books now or listening or digesting them, whatever you want to call. You're getting the information from them. You know, you're being moved by them. Um, e I love that. That is technology has helped with that. You know, it, I feel like it's a part of maturing and just realizing that I think for a long time I relied on my creative side to lead the way mm -hmm. you know like this this is what i got this is what i'm good at right so let me just do focus on that right but after you focus on that one thing for so long you realize like okay i feel like i need a little bit more mm. out of life yeah. i need to maybe <laughs> learn how to develop other skills and you know just be a more well-rounded individual yeah. versus just being good at one thing. I wish somebody taught me that at a younger age. Yeah, me too actually. I think about that a lot. You know, how you the things that you're good at, you think that that's it. Like that's the most important thing and I'm the best at this and or I'm really good at this and where where is when the actual reality of the situation is precisely because you're good at that means you actually shouldn't be focusing that much on it. Maybe at this point, mm -hmm. you need to develop the other bits that are good in order to maximize the thing that you are actually good at, right? 1,000%. Yeah. If I could go back and tell my younger self anything, it would be to develop various skills at the same time. Mm -hmm. And yes, you know what you're good at and you, you get really, really good at that, but don't have tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. Like, like, always think about other ways that you could, you know, develop other skills because truly I believe the way of the world is to just have your hand in different baskets, mm -hmm. you know, like different streams of income mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. and that comes with having various skills, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, I like, I wish I did a business degree. I wish I had that business side 
of my brain churning mm. while I was developing my interior design skills. Because mm. mm-hmm. now that I'm, you know, in a position where I've started my own business and I'm trying to now scramble to figure out the business mm-hmm. side of things, mm-hmm. which is a completely different thing different than, than aspect to you know what i've been focusing on my whole life right. which is just the creative aspect right right you know so i wish i i developed that skill sooner yeah. well i think you will develop it for sure based no, on I, what i'm seeing i have to yes yeah. i'm in survival mode now yeah. i gotta i gotta learn it just yeah. means that i'm learning on a very um compressed type yeah. of schedule huh yeah um yeah, there's some books I recommend. You should definitely pop those um, into your into Audible whenever you have the uh, you know the um, the get it, the the business philosophy stuff. You know, oh. like the things to think about. Um, I'm. You got one. Never, uh, never get a real job. That's what I'm listening okay, to right so now. Okay, so you're already on it then. Yeah, so this is now tapping into business there you go. ownership. There you go. She not playing around. I ain't playing. <laughs> I ain't playing. I am on a mission to fill my brain with some valuable stuff. Amen. I that, love that. That's, that's where I'm at. I, I cut down on a lot of other things in my life. Right. Um, and this has been giving me so much joy. But yeah, the business side of things is... And how's that going? Uh, it's going great, you know. I mean, I've learned how to measure my su- my success differently. Okay. You know, I feel like we focus on finances so much and, you know, we got to make money and do all these things. But for me, the success right now is that, first of all, I had the courage to start my own business mm-hmm. and step out alone. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, when you practice interior design for a long time, and you're so used to having like the support of a team and I love I absolutely love collaborating with people smarter than me mm-hmm. like that that is by far the gift that I've been given throughout my career mm-hmm. that I'm surrounded by really smart people mm-hmm. and they can help guide design because I feel like the best design comes from a lot of people putting their heads together it's not just you know, my point of view right. and, you know, having an ego about design, it really like the best work comes from collaboration. Right. I believe that. Right. So, you know, being on your own, that is, that has been the toughest part for me right. that I, I don't have that support system anymore. I don't right. have all of those really smart, you know, bits of insight from uh, my colleagues and, you know, just, you, you feel at ease or you know you'll get it done when you have the support. But now I've just had to tap into um, just being brave, mm. you know, like you got this girl, like y- you've done this for a long time. You can figure it out. Mm-hmm. And what I don't know, you know, my friends are just a phone call away as well. Mm. So that took a little while to get used to. Right. But now that I'm in a space where I feel really confident about the direction that I'm going in. And um, I've just learned how to tap into my own thoughts, my mm-hmm. own feelings on design and like like be confident in those decisions. Um, that's been great. Mm-hmm. That that's, that's just taken my overall confidence to another level because right. I feel like I can definitely stand on my own two feet and do this. Like, I love that. I'm, I'm good. But I think the unique part about working on your own now is that I get to be on site and actually talk to vendors and talk to, you know, everyone in the industry, construction guys, and just get their point of view on things. Right. So getting to do a lot more of that and building those, you know, relationships and connections has been amazing. So previously you wouldn't have done that as much. Well, when you work for a firm, you know, everything is really like your your time on a project. You do a proposal. These are the hours that you have set for a project and you really try to use those hours very wisely. Right. You have to be super efficient. Right. That's the pressure involved in doing this type of work, that everything is timed. Mm-hmm. So in that type of setting, 
you don't necessarily have the freedom to, you know, go to the job site and spend the extra hour talking to the plumber or the electrician sure. or, you know what I mean? Like you don't have that. I mean, you could, but those are valuable minutes right. that you're wasting on the overall, you know, project, project. scope. Right. Um, but in this scenario where I get to dictate all those extra hours and understand the value of them for me personally and for my business. I'm I'm making a point to dedicate that time to talking to people, getting to know them, you know, just just having more interpersonal relationships with people versus being so busy, busy, busy and in and out. Um, I like making connections with people. So, and there is value in that. I'm learning more. Yeah. You know? Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's very different being on your own, but, um, I love it. I love the freedom. Yeah, it is great, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's all about that freedom. I love the freedom. And, um, and the challenge to yourself to, you know, be as strict with yourself as you were when you were working for somebody else. Like I find that it's hard. Like when if I'm work, if I have a boss, I will work harder than if I don't have a boss, right? And then it's like, and then it's like, why is that? First of all, and then second of all, no, you 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 don't have a boss, but you still have to work that hard. You still have to keep up that level. Like I find myself working when I'm working for myself. I like to pretend that it's a nine to five. Mm -hmm. So I have like go go go. You know, and mm -hmm. it's. It's crazy. I mean, that's just me. That's how it is for me. Um, you know, because the, the freedom does let me relax a little bit more, you know, I guess. Well, the bank account. <sighs> yeah, that's true. When, that's when, the thing yeah, that stimulates. Th that's, that's what makes me <laughs> hustle. Because <laughs> I'm like, oh. I, I mean, but yes, you're right. It is challenging. And I do feel those challenges as well. Um, but I am generally very self-motivated mm -hmm. um, and I love what I do. Mm -hmm. So I enjoy working. Mm -hmm. um, I've never looked at it at interior design as a chore. It's always like, I'm so intrigued. I'm so excited. But what I do like about it now is that when you do get to make your own schedule, I can decide when I'm going to put in those hours. So for me, it's not necessarily like first thing in the morning. You know, like, you know, in a sure. typical job, I have to come to work at eight o'clock and then I leave at five. Sometimes those aren't those hours aren't like the windows that are more productive for me. Sure. I find that working late at night sometimes, like That's if I'm in a time crunch, um, I can put on the pressure and I'm so focused yeah. late at night. Huh. Um, I don't like to do that often because I do like to get good sleep, which is also something I Part learned along the way yeah. um, of importance of keeping that balance. Uh, but yeah, I do like the opportunity to create my own schedule right. and put in the work where I see it's best right. for my schedule. Yeah, and it's, you know, if you if you actually do work better in the evening and night then that's probably when you should be doing the work as mm -hmm. opposed to between 8 and 11 when you're not as focused. Yeah. Although I'm opposite of you. But, yeah. you know, it depends on the type of work. Because That's true too, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, good because point. If, I'm, if I'm doing a proposal, mm -hmm. I can't do that late at night. Hmm. Because, you know, with proposals, like every job is different. So there's a lot of thinking and writing and, you know, information that has to be accurate mm -hmm. in a proposal um i find it's best to do that first thing in the morning Interesting. yeah uh, you, you're so right i never thought quite thought about that or articulated that but like for me the admin stuff the accounting stuff it, it, morning that's my only hope at actually making that happen is mm -hmm. in the morning in the night mm -hmm. that not happen mm -hmm. um my creative stuff i can pretty much do anytime anytime um but that admin stuff, it's got to be first thing in the morning. Yeah. After Agreed. lunch, it becomes less and less likely that I'm going to yeah. be able to make that happen. That's so interesting. Huh. Yeah. It's, I, yeah, I'm, I'm really bad now, though. Like, now that I've, I got to tell you the name of the book that taught me. A friend of mine. So when I went down this road of um, wanting to read more books, I asked all my friends to give me books that they recommended. And let me tell you this book, Peak Performance. 
You told me about that. Peak performance, guys. Peak performance. Game changer. You got to get that flow. What does that mean, peak performance? Peak performance, it's really about understanding the importance of stress and rest for success. That's it. Stress and rest plus rest equals success. I don't know if it's exactly if they quote it as success, but that's basically what the book is about. Okay. That you have to have the balance of the two, like the advantages of being in a stressful state, mm-hmm. but the body actually starts to break down if you are in a stressful state for too long. Right, right. And and what the book does, it applies it to different types of people doing different types of activities. Right. So whether you're talking about, you know, an artist or an athlete, bodybuilder, um, whatever, whatever it's profession. All the same. Yes. If it they say is, that with bodybuilding, like it, the, the results come when you're resting. Yeah. yeah. And it, it literally yeah. applies to anyone for any task that you're right. doing right. that, um, you know, I think there has been a time where resting has been, equ- it, they've kind of put it in the category of being lazy. Yeah. But really rest is a, very important part of the equation right. because that's how the body heals and that the how that's how you get the real growth. Right. Oh, I think it's stress and rest equals growth, not huh. success. Right, yeah, right, right. Something like that. But anyways, very good book. Huh. I learned a lot from that and it actually was the that was the starting point for me of getting more sleep and prior prioritizing sleep Love that. in my life. Instead of thinking like I'm oh, wasting time. Yeah, I'm really working hard. If I work till till three in the morning, then I wake up at seven, and I only got three hours sleep. That really means I'm I'm doing I'm doing I'm, yeah I'm killing it, I'm crushing it. No, you're not. You need that balance. You need the sleep. Yeah. You need the sleep. Mm. You need you need to let your body heal and rest so that you're more alert and aware, and can tackle everything that you need to do within the window. The key mm. is to just figure out how to be more productive in the window. Mm. I love that. It reminds me a lot of the whole, you know, chaos versus order thing, you know, like stress being the chaos, like, and then, and then, um, rest being the, um, the order. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's, you know, the universe is made of chaos and order. And then that Mm -hmm. balance between those two, like both Mm -hmm. are needed. Yeah. And, um, but both are needed. Yeah. And, (laughs) and it also, I think the way it talks about stress You know, for a long time, I've looked at stress as the enemy Mm -hmm. because you're like, (sighs) you just, God, you know, like like dealing with hard situations and feeling that stress. Yeah. But how they, you know, detail it and and really break it down, like how beneficial it is to growth. Mm -hmm. Like you really don't experience the growth until you go through the levels of stress required right um if you're breezing through you're really not growing right huh. yeah that's, that's fascinating that, so it it actually just helped me to um be at peace with the stress when it comes mm-hmm. and just kind of get through it and know like okay this is how i'm gonna work through the stress and it's just a phase yeah the rest will come yes this, you know so i don't need to freak out about the stress yes. that's happening there's no freaking out happening. right right it's part of the yes. plan and yeah and then and then you just handle it better at that point when you yeah when you have the a larger perspective huh. yeah yeah very good book and those are some good insights i have to say i'm well impressed yeah. I'm well impressed, Gina Poo. Oh, thank Lots you. Lots of good reading going on there. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm like, it's amazing what you do when you can um, stop drinking as much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want to judge anyone. That's not what I'm trying to do. If you enjoy drinking alcohol, that is that is totally <laughs> fine too. But um, for me, I felt like my life just... Um, Opened up a little bit more once I stopped drinking as much alcohol. Right. I still drink, but I I, I, I barely drink. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Just makes me feel more rested and um, just use those those hours to do other things now. Yeah. And it's funny when you move along that path, you know, it's like it doesn't it doesn't 
drinking doesn't hold the same thrill anymore. It's almost like, ugh, do I have to? Where are we going tonight? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, I guess I'll have a drink. Especially when you have a child. Right. I mean, to wake up with a hangover is absolute torture when you have a child, a toddler that specifically. Is, that's the worst, huh? It don't get worse it, than it that. It doesn't get worse than that. It really doesn't. <laughs> Because, and I haven't quite done it in the toddler state. I did do it, you know, like once you, you know, you have a baby and you feel so like locked off from the world, you're stuck at home, you're exhausted. Like you just dream of the day to go out with your friends and like just go wild. Right. And I definitely did that <laughs> and I definitely regretted it. Um, yeah. So I can maybe count on two fingers how many times that's happened in the last three years because yeah. it was just that awful right yeah right right <sighs> yeah no thanks <laughs> painful <laughs> yeah painful yeah yeah man huh. it ain't no joke no the responsibilities no. are right there at 6 a.m <laughs> <laughs> wake up girl <laughs> it's your time now <laughs> you it's it's you're up yeah it's, huh. it's intense that's, that's wouldn't funny. change a thing it's my little blessing Oh yeah. Hmm. So, what else do you want to talk about? <laughs> what do we want to talk about? <laughs> I love that you're doing this podcast, though. Yeah. You you inspire me so much. I feel like you always go off, and you you truly just are in your own lane, doing things that inspire you all the time. And this has been since we were kids. Mm. This isn't an adulthood thing. <laughs> Right. From the time we were kids, I always looked at you and said, this guy, he just doing his thing. You're just leading the way and whoever want to follow, follow. Um, but I just always admired that. And this is just one of those things as well. You know, right. you're like, huh, I'm just going to do a podcast. You know, like, hey, I'm just going to start this sport and came on. Hey, I'm just going to do this and do that. <laughs> and I like that. I think it's a great quality. I've always admired it since you we were Thank Thir you. 13, 14, right, 15. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think it's it's the chaos element that I'm very at home with. It's the stress element, you know, so trying new things and putting myself out there. But it's really the rest bit that I need to work on. And when mm. I say rest, I don't even, even necessarily mean just resting, sleeping, but putting some order into mm. my life. Like, you know, even with this podcast and my my work and my creative stuff, like, mm -hmm. yes, I can explore with my mind and try all these different things, but yeah. I'm good at that. What am I not good at? I'm not good at like sort of ordering things. So I'm like trying to mm. explore that, that a bit more. And mm -hmm. um, CICBD has been great with that to just put some order into my business a little bit. Okay. Feel, yeah, it just feels a lot better. It actually feels... You feel less stressful when you have some of these systems in place. And this podcast itself, I was very worried that it would be too much. Uh, you mean time-wise, like too much on your plate? Exactly. Or? Okay. Because exactly. I'm known for that. Yeah. I'm always like, taking on something else that I don't have time. Yeah, right? yeah. And I was always worried about that with this podcast. So when I was planning it, which is not something I would normally would have done, mm -hmm. I was planning it very specifically so that it did, would not encroach on my time and that I would mm -hmm. actually be able to do it mm -hmm. consistently. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very pleased that it actually turned out that way, that it's not an issue for me to churn out these podcasts. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. And you can, I can knock them out, you know, yeah. and pretty easily and it doesn't encroach on my sort of Monday through mm -hmm. Friday um, stuff. But yeah. Well, but, that's good because it keeps you in a state of always growing and learning new things. And I mean, I love that once you learn something new, it can be tapped into all these other aspects of life too that or, or create other opportunities, sure, you know? Sure, I, I like that. I just feel like you've always tapped into creating different opportunities for yourself. Hmm. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, but all the other stuff will come. I mean, like I, like me as a new business owner, looking at you who have been on this journey for so long, like I really, I feel like you've taught me a lot and, and you haven't even put pen to paper yet and mm. like actually show me, but just the conversations we have, mm. you know, how you're talking about the organization aspect of mm -hmm. things and getting your processes in line mm. so that you're a little bit more prepared to answer questions mm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That has been like 
some of the best advice that I've gotten on this mm, journey cool. that I'm very, very grateful for because mm. I'm getting there mm-hmm. where I want to be more prepared. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I also am building the experience, which also helps me to understand what I need to prepare sure, for. Sure, sure. Yeah, so... You need to do it before you can document it. Yeah, kind of. yeah. yeah. It, and... Yes, it's trusting. Like after the... you do it is when you're like you document it. Oh, I did this and I did that, and then you, yeah. Well, CICBD yeah. told me that, so hey, you know. But you know what? Thank these you. things, it's just business philosophy. Like they like I'm sure like that book will have a ton of similar things, and a lot of the other books about making a business, they all have like mm-hmm. similar things. It's not like, it's not like I mean, each business is unique, but also I feel like each business have the same. Um, modules or areas that need to be focused on in in different degrees like it's it's like a science is what i feel like i've learned over the last couple years running Mm -hmm. a business is a science it's been Mm -hmm. done before people Mm -hmm. have been successful Mm -hmm. and this is how they've done it these are the things that they've thought about whether it's the team yeah the internal organization Mm -hmm. the sales and branding approach Mm -hmm. like you can't you can't run a business without a sales um, strategy or a brand, you know, or at least a successful mm-hmm. one, you know, mm-hmm. and you can't really be successful if your books aren't in order. And it's like, so it's like the same elements are in play with all businesses and those who have done it well, they tend to be very similar in how they, mm-hmm. and how they did it. I'm here to receive and learn and figure it all out. I'm not beating myself up about it. There are things that I definitely do not have figured out yet but it's a process and i'm just trusting the process i'm like i'll get there i'm just it's gonna happen yeah yeah it is gina and and undoubtedly i mean we can see it in your life just how you've evolved and and um yeah you know i think you you were um you know you're i think you're more on the introvert side of things but i you to see you explore that and sort of open up where you know some people might even consider you an extrovert if they didn't know better i think is very interesting you're, you've always been you're actually very open-minded you're a very open-minded person um and i don't say that often about a lot of people especially like us as caymanians mm-hmm. um but you're very open-minded very very liberal-minded and like you were saying earlier i think you're very empathetic you've sort of always been able to like read the room and, wow. and and like you, you would point out, hey, buddy, you're pissing that person off, right? Mm. You know, you would you would bring it up to me mm. when I wasn't quite realizing what was happening, mm. you know. So you were always sort of very open minded and very aware of other people and how different actions and words have an effect on them. Um, yeah. yeah, I yeah. appreciate you saying that. I don't think that anyone's ever said that to me. I mean, I do take pride in that. Um, but yeah, wow. Thank I don't you. think it, yeah, I don't think thank anybody you. would disagree with that, right? Thank if they you. heard me say that, yeah. No, you're yeah. you know one of my besties. Yeah. From from long time. Yeah, seriously, long, long time. Yeah. And here we are. And it's funny that when you when you know each other so well that you can actually make that observation and actually break it down like that because I think. Like you said, generally people would think that I'm an extrovert, but I'm not. I kind of, I've categorized myself as an, you know, extroverted introvert, Mm. you know, because (laughs) now that we can categorize it, um, because I do love, I love engaging with people. I love people, Mm -hmm. you know, like I'm not, I don't shy away from it, but I still struggle in big social settings. Mm. Mm. You know, so it's kind of like this weird thing about the the characteristics and qualities that I have. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, so you can talk at length with anybody about anything, but the actual act of, you know, initiating that conversation or like feeling uncomfortable in the room, I still haven't conquered that. Like um, that, I still shy away from those settings where I'm you know, feeling vulnerable. I like stick with, you know, people that I know, but I can talk to anyone once that conversation is sparked. Right, right. Um, but I, I wish I could get over that. I, I think you can. I try. I, I read a book about it. There you go. And there it still go. didn't help. No. But I tried. It was, it was I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep 
you know, no, at it. it but um, the book was, is it How to Talk to Anyone? Hold that on. rings a bell. Um, go down to this list. To How to Win Friends and Influence People. Oh, yeah, you read that book? Is it uh, Carnegie who wrote that? Yes, it is Dale Carnegie. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it's such an old book. It's a classic. So how it was written is really interesting, like stories. Yeah. Um, but anyways, I just brought that up to say that I am working on those things about myself, but I do still consider myself a, an, int- an extroverted introvert. Extroverted introvert. Yes. Oh. Yes. I am a bit shy. People are like, you ain't shy. <laughs> but yes, I am. <laughs> just... I just don't want to be seen. I want to be heard, but I'm scared to speak. Like, what is that? Like, why can't I just stand up in a room and just say it? If anybody can help me, just send on any books, any kind of course, anything that can help me with stage fright. What, um, you ever did that thing that people go to? It's called, again, Toastmasters. I hated Toastmasters for how it made me feel. You know, and I'm like, this is so uncomfortable. But I see the value in it. Yeah. I know a lot of people that have done it, stuck with it. and um, You can see the results. Right yeah. It, but, you know, I, I definitely feel like it's one of those things that you have to be consistent with mm-hmm. and actually just keep doing it mm-hmm. until you just build up that, um, that skill to respond on the spot. Mm-hmm. Like I was, I mean, I was listening to a politician respond to these very heated questions and comments. And I, you know, even though the context was troubling for me and I had very passionate feelings about it, I'm listening to the responses and I'm like, wow, like that's a very well, um, you know, th- that that response had a body, it had an introduction, a body mm-hmm. conclusion. Mm-hmm. I was like, that is so amazing mm-hmm. that they have that skill yeah. to be able to receive information, even in a hostile environment, yeah. mm-hmm. and stay calm, have a really clear and concise response. Mm-hmm. And be very articulate and you know you're giving information and insight i was Mm. like oh god please lord just send me send me those skills Mm. yeah but yeah i'm not i'm not there yet but we'll see still a work in progress i heard it's like it's one of these things where in a situation like that where you're maybe about to talk to you know with all these people and you're like you start questioning like you, you start thinking before you say, which I don't think works. And then mm-hmm. and then it's like, no, maybe I shouldn't think. I should just say, like, don't mm-hmm. don't even think about it. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, well, what method do you use? What's the best best way to approach this? Like, don't think and just respond or, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like it's like any other skill. It just takes um, practice and confidence. But I feel like with practice, you get confidence. Right. Um, one of the challenges I gave myself just to help conquer that fear in me was to go on Instagram and, and like talk to the camera. Right. I love those when you do that. That's cool. You know, yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. that people don't realize like that is so outside of my comfort right, level. Right. I don't get any personal joy out of sticking a camera in front of my face and talking to it <laughs> and posting it, you know, but I do believe in the value in, in what that what that represents for me as an individual and for my company. Mm. And I also feel drawn to teach people things and like, you know, show them, mm. like give them little insights on what the process is like, mm. you know, for interior designers. So you got to do videos. You got you have to do it. Mm-hmm. You can't just be you can't just post pictures. Yeah. So that doing that has really been um me challenging myself there to step go. outside and you know talk freely without it being scripted right so a lot of the video well i would say 99 percent of the videos i've put on instagram have been completely like one take huh no no script no nothing just challenging myself to do it in one take right um and sometimes i might 
realize like, okay, that was really good, but I, I made one mistake. I should try and correct right, it. Right. And sometimes I just post it without correcting yeah. it. I'm like, whatever. Yeah. I'm a real person. Yeah. So I'm, it's not going to be perfect because I feel like I want to represent myself in a genuine way. I don't want it to feel too perfect sure you know that's not who i am so i want it to be a true reflection of of me i think genuine definitely comes off in those stories that you do oh, what thank you yeah man what i like about them is that you're slow mm. and composed and this is what i'm talking about <laughs> and like because everything else is like bah, bee, bah, bah, bah. but with you it's like you don't mind pausing which I really love. And then like, I hear like the birds in the background <laughs> <laughs> or like you're in, the, you're in the garden or, you know, talk like it's just it's a real refreshing take. It's kind of different, you know. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And, you know, it's funny because I have overanalyzed my own videos from that same perspective where I'm like, oh, girl, you're going to put people to sleep <laughs> talking so slow. But. And I never realized that I talk like that, but I, I know why I'm doing it. It's because I'm thinking on right, the spot. Right, right. So I'm kind of talking slow through it so that I can actually say exactly what I need to say. Mm -hmm. I've been actively trying to improve that, to be mm -hmm. honest, like to not speak so slowly, mm -hmm. um, to be a little bit more concise, quick, quicker. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a challenge, but mm. I, I like I like the challenge of of having to. Um, that's Come the whole. Up with that, yes, that's the yeah. whole point of us talking about this. Is like just the challenge of um, thinking on your feet quicker right. and, and and coming up with a heartfelt response, heartfelt response um, without overthinking it. Right. No, and what's good about yours is that sure, okay, maybe some people will like switch on to the next story, but. Yours is, it's, they're longer, but then they're worth it at the end. Ah, yes. Thank you. Yes, yes. You know, it's like, ah, oh, how cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, man. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, I, I just look at it like whoever's on my page, um, they, they must want to receive the information that I'm sharing because it's very specific. It's, mm. it's about interior design. It's about what I'm doing, um, you know, and also my love for my country and, you know, what's happening there. But it is predominantly about interior design. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm like, okay, if I give you a one minute video, I, I really am sharing some sort of insight um, that I feel is valuable in people understanding the process. Because I felt like, me being on this journey now where I'm having my own business and I get the, I have the opportunity to have a voice for the work that I do and I take it very seriously. I'm like, I want to share with people what, what it is that I do and, and well, what interior designers do and how challenging it can be. And just basically show a little bit more of truth behind it mm. versus it just being about the pretty before and after pictures, right, you know? Right. Um, there's so much to it. And I, I feel like I, I do want to play my part in giving a little bit more insight into the process of things. So, yeah. So if you see the one minute video, I'm really... I feel like people are interested because they're there. Yeah, but I think you're right about that. Yeah, that's who you're talking to at the end of the day is your yeah. audience that wants to listen to that, right? Yeah. And um, so, yeah, giving it to them as if they want to hear it, so they're going to hear you out for this minute is, yes. is cool. Exactly. Huh. And it's a, it's a process. Like, I, I hope to be more consistent with the posting. It's kind of challenging to be consistent. Mm -hmm. um, but... Yeah, it's going to get there. I'm just, I'm not pressuring myself and I'm not overthinking it being perfect either. I just genuinely want to get started and I don't want to be, I don't want to keep holding myself back just based on it being, you know, exactly how I want it right, to be. Like right. That is one thing I definitely trying to get over in my life. Like right. just, just do it and do it freely. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, man. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> Wow, how long have you been going? Um, oh, it's almost three. Uh, yeah, I think okay. we both need to head out, huh? Yeah. 
you know, you have a three-year-old. It's not, you just keeping them busy, really right. doing activities, All going right. to the beach, entertaining them. I don't have any like big plans or anything. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Are you going away again soon or? No. Yeah. No. Okay. I'm gonna, we're gonna hold out. It's so funny. Like the minute I had a little break from work, which probably would have been the better time to go traveling. Mm-hmm. Um, like where you weren't as busy, you mean? Yeah, yeah, but now I'm I'm actually really busy. So you know, traveling isn't just gonna. Okay. It's not gonna work out. I'd All rather right. just focus on the work. Yeah, man. And then once I get a little bit more free time, then I can do a little trip. Sure. Why not? Yeah. yeah. But traveling's not priority for me right now. Okay. I want to wait till Leela's a little bit older so that, you know, she can enjoy these things, the type of trips that we want to do. Right. You know, yeah. I don't want to just go to. Yeah, I, I, I want a little bit more activity. Yeah. And she, I don't think she's ready for that yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I know when she's ready for it, you're going to take her on those trips. So on those road no trips. About that. Girl, she come to me. Get them hiking boots. <laughs> Let's go. You can carry your own backpack. Let's go. Yeah. Yes, because that is important. Yes. You must enjoy the outdoors. That is important. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if she's going to be like you, like that. Always traveling and exploring. Like, I'm going to that corner of the earth this year. I'm going to this, like, literal corners of the earth, too. And it's like, I and mean, I come back here, all the pictures. <laughs> this is the trip. And it's just like, wow, it's inspiring. It's inspiring. If I don't go to a corner of the earth, I feel like I did nothing. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, like, I love cities for what they are, but I really love. I feel closer to God when I'm in the middle of nowhere and mm. there's hardly any tourists. That's the type of trip that really checks all the boxes right, for me. Right. I I'm, I'm not in love with touristy destinations. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know when we'll get to do traveling like that again. I feel like that's like a, like a faraway dream mm. at this point. Even mm. though I see tons of people traveling all over the world with mm. their kids, but I just. It's just a lot. I don't know how they do it, to be honest. I <laughs> I actually admire you guys. It is, wow. It's a lot. I don't think people talk about how stressful it can be, you know. Traveling with a kid? With kids, yeah. 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 But I do look forward to her being a little bit older and, mm-hmm. and being able to um, at least just sit still. Because mm. mm-hmm. we're not in the sit still phase yet. Yeah. No. This is not a sit still mm. phase. Yeah. Yeah, no, Mamsie's visiting right now, and she has, um, you know, her kids with her. And then her husband, Jono, went home Mm -hmm. um, because he had, like, a gig. But he had to come back for the flight back. Oh, (laughs) yeah, yeah. yes. And I'm like, Mamsie, you couldn't go up there with the two kids by yourself? Negative. (laughs) You better fly back. Negative. (laughs) Hello. So I thought that was pretty funny. Yes, because it is a a situation. It is a situation in yeah. the airport. Yeah. And like, <laughs> I I went in, like, I literally have been traumatized. I took Leela on one trip and I'm like, oh my God, I don't know when I'm ever going to travel again. Right, right. But Trauma. Well, you also as a, fir- I think it's different for a first time mom right. or first time parents. Um, that experience, because once you have many kids and you've done it a variety of times, like it's nothing and you get used to the chaos Mm -hmm. of it. But our first time, Mm. first time parents, first time traveling, Mm. and you're like, you're trying to be, you got the wipes and you got the disinfectant and you don't want them to touch anything. And it's like this whole, you know, you're like, like really on them. And then you take your child into the airport and they're like licking the armrest <laughs> and they're like rolling on the floor oh, and they're touching goodness. and high-fiving everybody they see. <laughs> and then they're like picking up that piece of, of chip that was on the ground that someone <laughs> dropped. And uh, I, I, I just threw my hands up. I'm like, I give up. <laughs> she is going I to be sick. <laughs> She's... She gonna get sick. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry for you. And that was a big lesson for me. I'm like, you can carry all the wipes you want, but you are not gonna stop these children from like, like just picking up all the germs. Right. Right. They don't care. Hmm. They don't care about the germs. But yeah, I mean, oh <laughs> hi, moms. 
feel like I haven't seen her in so long. Yeah. But yeah, it's it help is is definitely um needed. A, a plus. Mm. Even though I have listen, I know a lot of moms that travel with many kids on their own and they are superstars. Superstars. They are highly um skilled. <laughs> at what they do and I I am here for it and I love it and I admire you so much. So I just I need I need a little bit of that stamina. Yeah. to to get through the flight situation on my own. <laughs> <laughs> But we're uh, getting there. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, cool. Thanks so much for being on the podcast. Really, I know You're I would love like to keep welcome. going, but we 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 both have to go. Yeah. Um, I wanted to have you on for a long time, like I said. So I'm glad that I'm super glad that I got you on because, like I like you said, I figure you were gonna say no. <laughs> so it was like, I yeah, you know, and I did think like, let me do it sporadically. <laughs> Boom! Today, can you make it today in two hours? Pressure. Yeah, I think, I think that, that was like the best way Pressure. for me to get you on. No, and it worked. Yeah. It worked, and I and I truly, even while I'm driving here, I didn't quite believe that I was gonna be doing a podcast. Right. I'm like. Mm, I ain't really doing a podcast, <laughs> but whatever. I'll just, you know, humor him. But here I am, full on podcast, reading all my, you know, listing off my books and whatnot. But it's been nice. And I, again, this is also me challenging myself to just not be fearful and just be myself. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I don't need to be prepared to be me. I love that. Yeah. I don't need to be prepared to be me. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> is that profound? <laughs> I think so. No, I think it is profound. Yeah, Thank you. I think that yeah. hit that hit me. I think it'll hit other people. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I love that. Well, I think on that note. All right. Let's say bye. Take care. Uh, Thanks so much. Love aw, seeing you. Thank you, Toby. This was absolutely my pleasure. I love, I mean, we can chat about anything at any time, but under these very official circumstances, <laughs> it was nice. So thank you. <laughs>